Hey everyone, welcome to Technical Thursdays. We're going to do a lot of analysis today. So hi everyone, welcome to the channel. If you are new, please do subscribe, hit that bell button, like and comment. It makes a big difference. So apologies, I want to go over to my Twitter first, right? Reason being, one, you should follow me and two, just to give you an idea, this is happening still. I have put a load of like blocked word profanities and stuff and link disabling. So if you do put a link in, if you do say certain words, I'm not going to reveal them publicly, they may get completely binned, right? So apologies. So please just, if you are going to do a comment, do a genuine one. Don't say certain words that may or not get banned, i.e. do you have a WhatsApp? That will get shit canned. So overall, I want to talk about certain things on regards to last week's video. I did quite a bearish video last week regarding, oh my God, it's dumping, where can we go? In reality, I said this um, in the, throughout the video, did all right. Realistically, what were, were, were we expected? Potential targets of 13,500 and actually, well, realistically, it could have been a lot worse than that if it so wanted to, or it could have been a lot better and it was. It was 16K levels, give or take. We'll talk about certain things in the market. But today I want to go over Bitcoin, I'm going to go over Litecoin, VeChain, Zillica, the dollar chart and the dominance chart on this one because there's been a lot of people talking about obviously VeChain, Chainlink as well, not Chainlink, sorry, Litecoin and obviously Bitcoin because they come, they, they go hand in hand, Litecoin and Bitcoin essentially. So first thing we need to talk about is some news, right? We are getting more and more interest of mainstream usage. Um, PayPal, Visa then you're probably going to get MasterCard and other elements coming in the future as well. This is huge, and it comes into some element of stablecoin dominance that I'm going to talk about in a second as well. Um, obviously, this is a credit card and the enabler of payments around the world, very, very nice and easy. Using this stablecoin is huge. This is a big consortium-backed Stablecoin, which is fully audited as well, it's licensed, registered, whatever. Circle and Coinbase, yeah, cool, happy days. So this is quite big. Visa are huge. We all know Visa. Now, next one, bit of FUD. We love a bit of FUD on a Thursday morning, don't we? US lawmakers are stating that, you know, making stablecoins illegal without federal approval. Now, this is good for this previous element because this has been licensed and registered in like likes around of America as well. That's kind of like bullish on that coin. Not so much bullish, you're going to go with stablecoin, but you know what I mean, usage, yeah, dominance, yeah, cool, happy days. It removes something that we're all unsettled about, and I'm going to explain in a second. So, obviously, if this bill does go through, it might not, probably not. Um, basically, the shit old coins, the shit stable coins, will probably get shit canned because they are not audited, they're not regulated, they're not licensed to be used. That is, in a way, good. But it's also a bit of a bummer because it also means for this. Now, stablecoin, the main one, is Tether. We all know it's a little bit fishy. It smells a bit rotten because there's so many coins that are like belted out without real backing, let's just be honest. So it'll be interesting to see what the audit says. But overall, for the first time in its era, recently, very, very recently, like this is obviously September article, but it's obviously it's going to decrease even more as time goes on, in my opinion. That's good. Because the market is so heavily reliant on the liquidity and the flow of Teva, it's huge. So if you think all the foot around Teva is lawsuits, audit, it's shit, basically, um, whatever, that is huge to know that there is other ones out there that are in a much better position to basically take the mantle. So not to kind of foot anything, but just food for four, we may get a more dominant altcoin as a stable currency in the future. Who knows? Anyway, shall we go to some analysis before I break people? So, Bitcoin, hello. Now, last week's video, we were talking about this, and I talked about this level. This level is huge. Between the 16K level, it's it's a big zone, as you can see. It's a big, huge level from this previous level. I was saying very, very briefly that if it's an aggressive move, it may get bought up quickly because people are forming on the dip. Yeah. If it didn't hold, it was going to go down to here. Okay, regardless, you know, go in steps. There's a lot of bears in Twitter, um, on Instagram, all over the place. By the way, follow me on Instagram. Haha, <laughs> uh, plug. Um, saying, oh my God, we're going to go down to 7K. Well, fucking hell, man. We've got to go to 16, we've got to go to 13, then probably 10, 5, then maybe 7. And everyone's going like, Phew. we're going to go down to 4K instantly with. No. So, overall analysis is. Uh, 
I don't know. Bitcoin's the one where it is hardest to read because of the FOMO mentality, the institutions. People are buying this up aggressively, right? Very, very aggressively. You can see here, little bit of volatility. Boom, boom. These are getting bought up quickly. People are buying these dips. It's every opportunity. Look at these for spikes. Liquidity grab. And I personally feel that we are going to go for another retest of all-time high again today, which is essentially 20K now, give or take. So we broke it a little bit. But what I'm saying is, overall, what I think is there's going to be a chain reaction of liquidation, stop losses triggered beyond 20K because people will be shorted from here. This is a perfect shorting range above this zone. It's like, hello, we've never been here before. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we can catch a top. Hmm. So... Price discovery mode might be happening soon. It'll be interesting. So overall, not much to talk about on Bitcoin other than the fact there was a horrible bearish divergence there up here and it dumped it. Reset, off we go. I think that was a nice liquidity grab the other day, potentially to retest that with a bit more juice, potentially. So let's see what happens. Moving on to Litecoin. Let's talk about Litecoin in more detail. This is more exciting one to talk about because as I mentioned yesterday's video, undervalued, overvalued. You could probably argue Litecoin is in that mix of mid-range where it's not all-time high levels, but it's also got a long way to run potentially to make a bit of gainage. When we look at the weekly time frame, just to put this out there. Now, obviously, this is where we've been. $365. Huge, right? Personally, we're in a downtrend. You can kind of see, obviously, if you're looking at it a certain way where you've got all these little highs where we've not breached yet. We have breached a high here, which is hugely important. So that's the next level. We're looking good, but we've got to break this level basically to kind of get more interest. But that's good return either way. If you're thinking, let's go long, potentially $145 range could be the target level. Well, you can go for it, but we've got to go in stages, okay? Stage number one is the obvious. We're looking at where this situation is right now. What have we got here? We have got a very, very big swing potentially, in my opinion, here, which is kind of already playing out, right? This is pretty much already played out where we've went up, we've went down and we've continued to the upside, right? We're flying. We're doing really well with that one, right? That's fine. But what we've got to look at as well is where can we go overall anywhere else? Like we've got this huge big move here, in my opinion, which is also very, very interesting to look at. Now, this is what I'm kind of more geared on looking at now, right now, in terms of using this as a low, at uh, the high, sorry, down to the low, where are we retracing? I personally believe that this is the next level to kind of look at where we've got this $100 basically, 99.45, and then obviously up to these levels, which is kind of hugely important of this bigger, more more crazy sort of swing of retesting these levels. But we've got to think logically. We've got to think, well, where can we go? But as I say, with the likes of Litecoin, I think that is a really solid one in terms of like potential risk reward. If we are targeting a retracement of this move, we've still got a little bit to go in my opinion. We still could easily retrace to that point. And the percentages are quite nice, you know, realistically when you think about it. So that is one to look at. Um, obviously, I've still got all the analysis on here, which I do need to go over and need to refresh it. Personally, I think that that could be very, very interesting over time. Um, realistically, when I'm looking at this, I'm looking at these sort of levels. It's very, very interesting to see how the cor correlation between these levels are kind of holding out. Um, but overall, I still think that this is pretty decent. Um, let me just have a little look to see, because there's all kinds of little swings here to look at. Nah, I'm not going to bother. But either way, that is the next level in my opinion. I think if we're looking at this top level here, going above this region, I think we should be targeting these levels in my opinion. Um, make life a bit more easy for ourselves. Um, let me just move some stuff around. Happy days. That, I feel, is more of a solid opportunity now if we're looking at places to kind of target. So if I just put that up there as well. There we go. I think that is the next play for Litecoin. I think this is where we are. We've obviously held a spot there. I think we are going to retest this level. This is obviously a key daily level, which we need to keep an eye on, this whole range here. So if I just put that on those... Candle body. Oh, for fuck, trade of view. Bosh. So I think that's a very, very interesting level um, for me personally. Overall, if we are looking for target ranges, personally, as you can see on the weekly time frame, zooming out, definitely in and around that region. There's a lot of confluence between that $100 level. Psychological round number as well. Cool. Moving on to the next one was VeChain. 
VeChain is doing very, very well, as you can see here. Huge confluence between certain things. Now, this has got two situations on here. Now, we've got this level here, which is the upswing, into this level here, boom, right? We've broke out from this level where we found support and we continue going up. This is the upswing. Huge levels of upswing. Now, obviously, ignore that greenness because it's an old layout. But if I just basically copy this level on and put it up here, this is like the huge extension where it could be very, very interesting, could be very, very fruitful as well. So let me just move that up a little bit. Boom. So that is what we've got. That is a kind of a really cool level. Now, we've got this level here, which is actually a very, very important level because this is actually the resistance level of the 618, which is where we've actually stopped and turned around before. We're going to have to retest it again. Very, very important we get that right. If this does not hold and we blast through it, happy days, we're going to go to these extensions. If it does hold it and we go down, we're potentially looking at lows, which is going to be horrible. But personally, I think that looks quite neat and tidy. Looking really, really good with the levels. Um, overall, I still, it's grown really well. And this is a key level. This is a 618 resistance, huge level. We've rejected it once. We're going to test it again very, very soon. Break out from this we go up to like 2.3 cents or whatever it will be, which is hugely important in VeChain. And it'd be nice, it'd be nice overall. Moving on to Zillica, I mentioned this a few days ago in terms of undervalued. And this was one of the tweets that I did recently in terms of like a huge swing. So again, let's talk about this swing level. This is a monster move, by the way. So if I go to like the three day chart so you can see it. So essentially what, what the swing was, was this low, all the way across into like the 618 on the nose perfectly and off we go right we've already blasted through you know this level which is a previous level we've made a high we're at yearly highs right now we're going even higher potentially and we're going to potentially retest this level which rejected and then maybe up to 4.6 cents which is hugely nice in terms of the grand scheme of things considering where it's been at the start of the year start of the year it wasn't even like it's point 0.002 cents, which is yeah, oh, it's crazy to think of, you know, not even a cent. Oh man, not even a point of a cent. It's crazy. So this is a very, very good looking chart. It's looking very, very nice. It's looking good. Two day chart looks beautiful as well. You know, the, the day chart looks awesome. It's just looking, looking great. It needs to continue obviously going up. If it goes up and closes above like literally four cents, it's a huge number, it's a huge barrier and it makes it look even better and continue going higher. So yeah, the, the notice, the Natara, the, uh, the, the obvious with Zilliqa is that the reward is staking what's coming with it, team, the Ethereum bridge and stuff. So that's really, really important. So that's good. Now let's talk about the more boring stuff, which we do need to talk about is the dollar chart. We've spoke about it the other day. Where are we looking? Well, it's looking pretty freaking savage. Um, I personally feel that we are going to melt down to these levels, these previous regions. There's a huge gap to fill. It's like, fingers crossed we do fill it. Now, if you look at the monthly chart as well, you can see that just, oh, it's just looking savage, man. It's looking horrible. The last two months have been disgusting. I do feel we are going to go down to those levels. Look at the 3D chart, just to kind of give you a bit of perspective on a normal time frame. It's looking horrible. And we did, we bounced. We rejected a key level of the fear, but then we, vroomf. it's looking good for Bitcoin, for altcoins, for the whole crypto market, that if the dollar does exit and gets weaker, we're gonna start seeing some movement. And we have had, since this big drop in the dominance of the dollar, the Bitcoin world has grew significantly. All time high for fuck's sake, come on. Moving on to dominance chart of Bitcoin. This is still doing what I wanted to do as it stands. It's very, very wishy-washy at the moment. My overall goal is that we are going to melt down to this 56 level and then potentially, hopefully, 53, 52 level, which will be hugely important as analysis to get altcoins driving forward. The last few days have been a bit bearish. It's been a bit boring as well, sitting on this level here. But I do feel overall we are going to melt at some point. And when you look overall and you zoom out on this, it is forming an obvious downtrend and it looks like it is set to go and retest this level at least, hopefully lower. If it goes even lower, as I say, the BTC charts, the likes of your Ethereum.BTC will fly and it is showing an uptrend here, as you can see. Let me just zoom in there. It's starting to show a bit of a trend formation, maybe a bottom out, bearish diver uh, bullish divergence sorry, on the RSI there, perfect. It's starting to go and if this does carry on going up, your Satoshi values in your wallet will be looking very, very flush. So 
Hiya. That is today's video done. Very, very rough analysis. I do apologize if it's a bit haphazard. If you are struggling to follow, again, free courses below in the links. And yeah, I'll see you again very, very soon. It's from love.